Hello there. This is going to be just a quick basics review of the advanced revenue module. So the first thing that we're going to look at with the advanced revenue revenue module is the revenue recognition rules. This is going to be what defines exactly how you're going to be recognizing the revenue um, for every item going forward. Um, you can have multiple different rules and they can have multiple different um, recognition start times and we can review that in a little bit. Um, you can have the amount, the source type be based off of quantity, or you can have it be based off of amount, or you can have it be based off of percent complete. Uh, so for a percent complete, you would have to have a, a project related to this, where you would either enter in the number of hours that you've spent and the total hours planned for the project, which would automatically calculate what the percentage complete is, or there would be an override um, percent complete field where you could then uh, designate when you were 30% complete, 70% complete, 100% complete, or any value in between zero and 100, basically. Uh, and then that would say, okay, now recognize that amount, that percentage of the revenue. When you're going uh, a percentage based on quantity, uh, that would be if you fulfilled X number of widgets. Um, or months of service or hours of service. Uh, if you're going based off of quantity, you could do it that way and say, okay, we've recognized 50 hours. So the quantity, 50 over however many you started off with, that's going to be our percent of revenue to recognize. If you go based off of the amount, then it will say, okay, I've billed uh, 1,000 out of $10,000 uh, on my purchase order <clears throat> or my sales order. Uh, and so then it's going to say, okay, that's 10% of the amount of the order. So recognize 10% of the revenue based on that line. Um, if we go into one of these, we'll see how we can change it up a little bit. <clears throat> so here's just uh, one example. Uh, once you've created it, you cannot change it. Um, but in creating a new one, you get to choose what is your source and then your start and end dates. So um, you can choose for it to be based off of a start date of whenever the event happens. So say that you were doing it based off of fulfillment. You could have a um, hundred percent revenue recognition on fulfillment of, of whatever item it is by saying the RevRec start date is going to be the event date and the RevRec end date will also be the event date. Then when NetSuite goes to create the revenue plan afterwards, it's going to create it 100% in that one period. If you had it to be recognized over a period of time, uh, let's say in this example, we want it to start, start recognizing the revenue when we create the invoice. So when we, um, when we invoice the customer, it'll say, okay, here's the percentage that you've recognized, start it on whatever today's date is, and end it, uh, in this case, whenever the line item says the end date of the project is going to be. You could also have it um, recognize, start in recognizing immediately and have it be based off of the, rev, uh, the revenue element start date and the revenue element end date. And then when you create the sales order, you immediately start recognizing and you can invoice after the fact if, if that fits whatever the, the client um, rev rec needs to be. So that's the revenue recognition rule that is going to be the driver of all of our uh, recognition from this point. The next thing that we would want to look at is the revenue category. This is just a way to group items together and say, okay, these items belong together. And when we're recognizing fair values, we need to recognize them um, according to this method or maybe exclude these items. It's all kind of tied in with the fair value formulas. So in this case, we only have one fair, fair value formula, which is whatever the, um, the whatever the sales price is, is the fair value. You could have this set up uh, in a number of different ways to, um, to break down the fair value, um, either higher or lower, uh, and then recognize whatever it should be based off of a fair value price list. 
that gets set up in a different place that gets set up in a separate fair value price list, which is down here. And that basically says for each item, what is my fair value? And then what is um, the bounds that I want to set on this? The fair value formula would happen on the revenue arrangement uh, to identify for this revenue item, what should the fair value have been? And then it calculates based off of the fair value and, and um, reallocates the revenue according to what those percentages should have been. Once you have that, those uh, little groupings set up, then we can go to an item. And on the item now we have this separate rev rec uh, and amortization side. Uh, so we're gonna have the item revenue category, which is what we would have just set up here on this tab, the revenue categories. The deferred revenue account is gonna be where it immediately posts to on the invoice. So the invoices will always post to a deferred revenue account. Um, and if it's intercompany, you can have a separate intercompany one. Uh, the revenue recognition rule is gonna be set on the item so that you don't have to be continually setting this on every sales order. You say, okay, this item gets recognized in this method and it go, it just says, okay, that's, that's fine, that's how it goes. The revenue allocation group is kind of where I was talking about where it'll group the items together and say, okay, these should all be fair valued together. Um, and the create revenue plans on, this determines when it creates the planned revenue um, or when it's going to create that revenue impact. So there are different options that we have for this. Uh, it can be, if I open this up on edit mode, it can be on fulfillment as it is shown here, which is just when you create the item fulfillment, fulfillment that's when it creates the plan. Uh, revenue arrangement creation will essentially be when you create the sales order or the invoice. Uh, if it's a standalone invoice, it'll be the invoice. But this revenue arrangement is gonna be uh, a separate document uh, so that sales order can be one and a revenue arrangement can be another one. And you can invoice and recognize revenue separately from each other. So on revenue arrangement creation, the revenue plan would get created immediately uh, or upon approval, then it would get created. And that's, that's how it would um, create these revenue plans then. Billing is gonna be on a um, invoice. So when you create the invoice from the sales order, that is when now the revenue element would be created into a revenue plan. Um, the revenue element is just a, like a line item of an, on a sales order. That's the line item of the revenue arrangement. So it's just a line item. And when you invoice that line item, then it creates the revenue plan or the revenue recognition. When you do it on project process or project revenue event, you have to have a related project created. Uh, project progress is gonna be typically a percent complete option. Uh, and project revenue event would be if you created an invoice from a project, that's when it would impact. Or if you had a separate milestone set up on the project, um, that event then can trigger to create the, the, the revenue posting. So that's the create revenue plans on. And the create revenue plans on combined with the revenue recognition rule is the biggest part of advanced revenue module. That's gonna decide all of when and how the posting of revenue is impacted. So we'll go to uh, a sales order example. So this one, they call it a master contract. So we have this, this uh, project that we've created and all of these four line items are created. Then in our related records, we have this revenue arrangement, which I've pulled up. And based on the different items that it has, it's gonna recognize the revenue a certain way. Um, and so this would then be the document uh, that relates with the sales order, but only for revenue posting. It will keep track of what the quantity is, your sales amount. Um, it'll calculate what your fair value should have been um, for, for each quantity, what's the total fair value. And then this is where it's going to start allocating. So if it says, okay, uh, your origin, your sales amount was 11, 15, and 21, but really fair value should have been 
5, 15, 21, it'll reallocate the, the values based off of those percentages, and you'll have a different amount here. In this case, we don't have that because we only have the one uh, fair value rule of 100%. And so all of the sales amount is going to be the fair value. From here, we can do view revenue plans. Um, so this document as a whole is the revenue arrangement. These line items here are the different, different revenue elements. And then the revenue plans is going to be when we actually start to recognize the revenue. So looking here at the actuals, we can see that there's three different revenue recognition rules. Uh, if we select on any one of these, it'll pull up a different page where we can see what the revenue recognition is going to be for this one. So for this one is the percent complete. And so in February, we recognized um, a certain portion. In March, we then went from 16% to 43%. And in April, uh, sorry, we recognized 16% in February, 43% in March, and then 29% in April, uh, which totals us at almost 90% recognized at this point. And if you were to go backwards on a project or add additional hours, uh, it could do a negative recognition if uh, you went from 89% to 80% by adding additional hours to the project. Uh, you could, I mean, you would have a separate transaction to, to merge that additional revenue, but it'll reduce your, your percent recognized because now you are uh, you have completed less of the project. And then when you reach the the 90% again, it'll re-recognize. Um, it'll also, because the other side should be with the same project, you'll have caught up on all that additional revenue from that side. So it should um, kind of balance itself out by having the second revenue line also need to be um, recognized for the 80%. But that's just a, that's just a quirk on project revenue. If it's a straight, if it's a more straightforward, where it's licenses and it's based off of fulfillment, then if we look at this plan here, it was created on item fulfillment, so triggered by item fulfillment, and it went um, in April. It was fulfilled, and then we have you know ten percent to be recognized for the um, all the way up to January twenty twenty three. So that is uh, revenue plans, a very basic upfront view of the advanced revenue module within NetSuite. Uh, thank you.